My name is Isaac Gewertz. I'm curator of the Henry W. and Albert A. Byrd collection of English and American literature at the New York Public Library. We're not a bastion of Sylvia Plath manuscripts, but we do have some interesting material. This is from her adulthood. This is a poem, a well-known poem of hers called Brasilia. Brasilia was the great modern city built from scratch in the Amazonian jungle in Brazil and she visited it. We have six drafts, well three manuscript and the rest heavily annotated versions, uh, typewritten versions. The published version begins, will they occur? These people with torso of steel, winged elbows and eye holes awaiting masses of cloud to give them expression. She's comparing these great skyscrapers of Brasilia to people. The first draft she began with a line that was never used, bone splints of the future comparing these tall skyscrapers to splints of bone. We also have books that she owned. This is um, a theme in many rare book collections, and especially so in the Berg, where we own the books that were owned by other authors, books that they annotated and noted their comments and reactions to the work. This is Four Quartets, T.S. Eliot's great poem, his second great poem. His first was The Wasteland. And Sylvia Plath, this was given to her by a friend in 1951. She's taken the Greek epigraphs that introduced the work and has translated them. She's gone through the poem page by page, has gone through the philosophical ideas, the analysis of time, the paradoxes of time and memory and how they interact, and has also pointed out many technical poetic matters, uh, Eliot's technique. And it's a very, very detailed analysis and interpretation of a poem. So it's a wonderful thing to have to see a great poet working, taking her mind and imagination and working through the poem of another great poet. This is a standard anthology. Oh, it was popular in the 40s, 50s, 60s, into the 70s. It may still be now for all I know. That was edited by Louis Untermeyer, a great critic and scholar. And here too, it includes Eliot, includes other poets, of course, that she has commented on, but none so heavily as Eliot. And here is an example of a double page opening of The Wasteland, where she's gone into the symbology. Again, a lot, a lot of uh, Eliot's poetic technique, the structure, the recurrence of certain images, the, develop the development of imagery and how that enhances the meaning. So there's a good deal here of Sylvia Plath that a scholar who's interested in her would want to see. This is a typescript with a manuscript draft and manuscript on the back of um, a, a poem called Insomniac. And there it contains, see, two stanzas that she crossed out. He is intimate with fatigue, the shadowy lover who nightly with great affection peels back his skin. So I think we have there just a personification of insomnia, which was not published. And then a letter from Sylvia Plath to the notable and wonderful literary critic, cultural critic, Alfred Kazin, and she's writing from London. Dear Alfred, I'm applying for a Eugene F. Saxton grant for youngish creative writers to complete a novel that I'm working on, and I wonder if I could bother you to stand as a literary reference on my list. She talks about how she and Ted are living together. She hopes that he'll visit them. In England, Ted is a famous man and publishing poems and stories all over the place, together with the first children's book, radio plays, and so on. The critics say that after the four quartets, he's the only visible mountain. So that shows Sylvia Plath's great enthusiasm for her husband and his literary gifts.